going. So kia ora everyone and welcome to our August webinar. We're really excited to be um, starting the first in a three-part series that we're running in collaboration with Digital New Zealand. And we've got um, the wonderful Thomas and Slay with us today, who's going to be our presenter. So I'll just hand it over to her to introduce herself and um, get started. Great. Kia ora koutou. Uh, ko Thomas and Slay toko ingoa. Um, I'm coming to you live from my glamorous house in Petoni to beaming to li libraries around the country, which is really exciting. Um, I am the community manager here at Digital New Zealand, and um, it's really a delight to have a chat with you today about our service and uh, the work that we've been doing and some ideas we have for the future um, as well. So. Uh, I am going to chat with you briefly with my video on for a while now and give you a brief introduction to Digital New Zealand. And then I'm just going to turn my video off and do a screen share with you and give you a kind of live de demonstration of the website and um, some of the work we're undertaking. Uh, so I'll disappear for a bit in the, in the, sh in the near future. But um, I wanted to say in relation to questions, um, I think perhaps in the interest of simplicity, what I will say is I'll talk for about 40 minutes, I think, and maybe if you can save your questions um, for the end, if, you, if anything comes up, just maybe make a note of it and then we have a, we'll have a question time at the end and people can just pop their microphones on and ask me. Um, I'm just aware of muting and unmuting and stuff during the webinar, webinar might be a little complicated. So um, if that's okay with everyone, that's what, how we might uh, look after questions today. Um, so yeah, um, during this webinar, I'm just gonna give you a really general overview of the Digital New Zealand team and some of the work that we're undertaking at the moment. Um, I'm gonna kind of showcase the website to you, um, talk very briefly about some of the work we do in relation to um, our application programming interface, our API, and, and our data service. Um, I'm gonna talk about uh, search tips and filters for the site, and I'm also gonna talk about Digital New Zealand's story functionality, functionality at the end. Um, but to kind of give a framework for our discussion today, um, I listened to uh, Paula Eskett, the new president of Leanza. She gave a really great interview I heard her on. Um, I would think it was on RNZ a couple of like a month ago talking about the role of uh, changing role of libraries um, and I also had a quick look Julia at the video interview you did with Paula uh, recently oh, yeah. when after she just become um, president and um, I was really inspired by some of the stuff that Paula was saying about um, you know this is not necessarily new things but libraries um, as community hubs and also the place where there's sites where a lot of people have access to digital content and computers when, where they otherwise wouldn't potentially have access to those technologies. Um, and so I was really, it was great to work with Julia to put together this webinar um, around Digital New Zealand as a site that hopefully you as librarians across the country can use to introduce people to the real wealth of digital taonga that we're producing as a country. Um, lots of uh, libraries, um, museums, galleries, and um, government institutions sort of goes without saying now, but are obviously digitizing and producing born digital content. And um, Digital New Zealand as a service, which we're, we're turning 10 years old this year, um, was born out of a desire to make sure that content is really accessible, discoverable, um, shareable, and kind of clear as to what you can and can't do with it. Um, so yeah, uh, I was really inspired by Paula's ideas for um, for libraries and hearing and hearing those interviews that she did, and, she, and also another comment that Paula made was she talked about um, Leanza and as association moving forward and, and fostering collaboration between libraries, and that really ties in with Digital New Zealand's Kopapo as well, which is um, we are by our very nature a, a nationwide collaboration. Um, as you'll see in the presentation I'll give, we, we bring together all these collections so that they can inform and um, contextualize each other. And we are really nothing without all of our um, over 200 different content partners that we work with. So this idea of um, bringing libraries like special or heritage collections together um, to see what, how they work in relation to each other and working together is really a core part of Digital New Zealand's work as well. So it's great to see these um, alliances and connections between uh, Leanza and the work of libraries and Digital New Zealand as well. Um, 
So yeah, my role at Digital New Zealand is the community manager. I give a lot of presentations like this one. Um, I also do a lot of work with our content partners, um, work, with, work with schools and teachers to introduce them to the service, do a lot of user testing of the site, and I'm just sort of generally a champion for our users um, as my role in the team. And to give you a sense, Digital New Zealand is a, uh, we're a team within the National Library, so it's a little bit of a Russian doll situation in that there's, a, uh, there's six of us, and the Digital New Zealand team at the National Library, and then the National Library itself is also part of the Department of Internal Affairs. So that's how the kind of layering works um, for us. Um, yeah, as I said, we're a small team and we have been around now for 10 years and the team's focus has changed over the years. And I'm gonna introduce you to the, today to some of the key um, work that we're doing um, in recent years and, and going forward. Um, so I think I can see, uh, Julia said you couldn't see it, but can other people see this little raise hand button on the right underneath? There's like a column with a list of participants and there's a raise hand button. If you can see it, I thought I might just ask from our participants who are here today, if you have used Digital New Zealand much in the past, maybe if you have, you could click raise hand and I might be able to see it. Oh, ah, yes. I can see that. Cool. So two, we've got two hands there. Three. Three. Okay, so like a little cluster of you. So hopefully those people who have raised their hands won't mind too much if I have a kind of general introduction. Um, but those who haven't raised their hands, hopefully this will be really useful to explain to you how the how this website works and what we do. So I'm just going to get rid of my video and I'm gonna screen share with you guys. So hopefully this works. Cool. Can you, Julia, can you see? Yep, I can see it. Yeah, cool. Yep. Awesome. So, and let me just move this. This is the Digital New Zealand website. So Digital New Zealand is a website, um, a search website and also a data service. So there are kind of two sides to the Digital New Zealand work and I'm really gonna be focusing on the search website and this presentation and looking, talking a little bit about the data work that we do. Um, I'm gonna start with this, uh, what we call our magic hat diagram, which is quite a good um, way of introducing Digital New Zealand's work. So. On the left hand side of this diagram, we have this amazing burgeoning collection of digital material so that people are producing either through digitizing hard copy content or producing content obviously that's born digital, like digital images and websites and that kind of thing. We have a whole lot of stuff being produced from community groups, from broadcasting organizations, obviously. I would argue Digital New Zealand is most well known in what we call the glam sector, so the cultural sector. And we've got government organisations, education, geospatial, commercial. Those are just some of the sectors, obviously, that are producing lots of really interesting and rich digital material. And so what Digital New Zealand does as a team is we pull together the metadata of each of all of these items. So as librarians, I'm sure you, you know much more about metadata than I do. Um, but what happens is, so there's obviously a digital image or a digitised image that will have a bunch of descriptive information about it. And we bring together all of the different um, disc, uh, metadata descriptions from different collections from all these organizations across the country. And we bring them together and we structure this metadata so we have a kind of agreed, um, it's sort of an augmented uh, uh, version of, um, I've forgotten the name of the schema, but we'll come back, back to me later, um, which is a kind of a structure of the metadata that we bring together and we map all of these organizations metadata against this kind of agreed schema that we have um, agreed upon and this kind of huge corpus of metadata which now we're talking is over 30 million items in in total is all brought together organized and constructed into this um, kind of it, what we call our api so that might sound a little bit scary but it's quite simple it stands for Applica application programming interface um, and I often think about it using the metaphor of uh, a kind of um, the beach potentially between the sea and the land. So what an API allows you to do is, is different pieces of software to talk to, get, to, to talk to each other and to get information from each other in a really seamless way. So we have this 
this um, huge corpus of, of metadata which we bring together in a structured way and we make that available via a free API so people can come to our website they can get a key to access the data and then they're able to build other things with it so um, I'll give a few examples of this later on um, you can build websites, um, search widgets, uh, other kind of interesting mashups or other interesting digital um, services using the data and having a kind of seamless access to the, these, all of these collections from across, from across the country. Um, you'll see this kind of tagline down the bottom about New Zealand's rich content being hidden or buried. And we're working on new ways to create, describe, license, store, surface and share New Zealand digital content. Um, so if that feels a little bit abstract to you, I'm going to give you a demonstration now of the Digital New Zealand website, which is basically one example of the API of this huge number of digital item, digital um, of, of the, all of this metadata brought together. This is one example of it in use. Um, and this is the example, obviously, that the Digital New Zealand team um, is responsible for, and it's the work that we undertake every day. So this is digitalnz.org. Um, it is a search website that people can use to access all of the collections that we aggregate. And I'll just give you a quick, I'm just, all my cased, these are all my cached searches here. I don't know why I'm searching potato hand, that seems a bit weird. But let's um, put in, we can just put in a search term um, to bring up some items which will demonstrate to you how the aggregated search works. Um, so this obviously quite broad um, demonstration, a search term brings up a huge number of things. So we have content partners um, like My Chili Bin, which are more commercial content partners, or um, glam sector organisations. Obviously, we've got a lot of items here coming back from the Turnbull Library. Um, Radio New Zealand are one of our content partners, so all of the audio um, Audio snippets that have been, are produced by Radio New Zealand are available on Digital New Zealand as well. Um, what else have we got here? We've got Auckland Libraries, we've got Te Papa's um, online collection, uh, amazing collection from Pukiareki in Taranaki, um, small organisations like Howick Historical Village, um, Motoro Museum, We've got Open War Memorial Museum. So this, this search gives you a sense of the breadth of the material that we're bringing together and the kind of different types of organizations that we work with across um, both sort of educational uh, organizations and then um, glam sector organizations. Um, as I said, it's very diverse. And this search obviously is so broad, we're bringing back a really diverse um, number of uh, search results as, as well. Um, this example here is quite a good one. So if we click through to this item from Trove in Australia, which is kind of the digital New Zealand equivalent over there, this kind of shows you um, what an item page looks like on digital New Zealand. So you can see here um, on the item page, we have a kind of limited, uh, a limited, um, num uh, limited amount of the metadata from this item. So we make a kind of selection as to what gets displayed on digital New Zealand. And then if you click out of digital New Zealand, we're going to go out to the, sorry, I'm just moving my, da, 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 da. we're going to go out to Trove, uh, which has the full item available on its site. And I think, I believe this is a really amazing collection of um, fully digitized Pacific Islands monthly. Um, just trying to find where the actual item is somewhere around. Hmm. Anyway, I think it is somewhere where I have to find it. You can actually view the whole publication, I'm pretty sure. Here we go. Um, this also gives you quite a good sense of, so for example, Digital New Zealand, as I mentioned before, we're bringing together all this material from around New Zealand, but we also um, aggregate material from international organizations as well who have material relating to New Zealand. So our kind of, um, our, our metadata acquisition policy is to bring together material which is either made by New Zealanders or relating to New Zealand. Um, so it's quite broad in that sense. So if there, for example, if there are items from overseas institutions that 
we believe kind of fall into this remit we do harvest from um, organizations overseas as well so hopefully it gives you a really good sense of how um of how the search kind of works and also this idea that digital new zealand which is sometimes a little bit tricky for people to get their head around we aren't obviously aren't a repository of items. Uh, we work, we collaborate with all of these organizations from all across the country to be a pointer to their material. Um, so often in my presentation, I'll be using images to kind of show you how it works, but the majority of Digital New Zealand, what you will get is an item page. Um, I'll just try and find another type of content. So for example, article. You'll get an item page which just has this little um, logo to indicate what type of content the material is and then you'll get this uh, little uh, limited slice of the metadata and then um, when you go out to the site, uh, in this case Radio New Zealand, this is where you get obviously the actual content which is text in this case. Um, Sorry, I'm just trying to bring up my, cool. So hopefully that gives you a kind of sense of how Digital New Zealand works as an aggregator and how the search kind of flows. Um, I was going to I uh, just demonstrate for you some of the lab collections from libraries that we work with. So we're really um, grateful for working with a number of libraries across the country who have heritage and um, special collections which they are digitizing um, or in the process of digitizing. And this might be relevant to a number of the attendees to the webinar. So for example, we're really delighted to work Fielding Library, have a really great, um, they have a recollect site, um, which is filled with really fascinating images and information about um, the history of Fielding. Um, this is one of my favorite collections actually, it's really amazing. Lots of really fantastic images. And so they've been working with Recollect to um, digitize and, and bring this material together. And yeah, this is obviously what it looks like out on the Recollect site. So on Digital New Zealand, you get this little snippet of material. And there are a bunch of other really awesome libraries that um, we work with. So the Buller, Gray and Westland dis district libraries also have a really fantastic Recollect site. This is their material here. So again, working with Recollect and they have um, a really diverse collection of images, exhibits from newspapers. This is how it all displays on Digital New Zealand. So we love working with libraries um, to make sure their collections are accessible via Digital New Zealand and also uh, kind of put their collections in relation to other material from across the country as well as a really powerful tool um, for building kind of contextual information, uh, context and um, relationships. Hamilton North uh, Libraries and Community Services are one of our great um, content partners that we love working with. Um, so uh, Palmerston North, I think it was last year or the year before, they went through a really um, great project of um, updating their online collection and it's um, really great to point to their collections as well. This is an example of how their content displays. So again, they have digitized um, photography, but they also have um, a number of digitized videos. Um, and so this again is how the content looks on Digital New Zealand. And then if we click out to Palmerston North site, this is what it looks like and they're really great. Um, the front end of their collection management system. It's a great image. Yeah, so I've obviously been focusing on um, images a little bit uh, because that you can get, you know, we, a bit of the information on Digital New Zealand um, as opposed to a, 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 an icon. But obviously there is a huge range of content on Digital New Zealand, including audio, um, videos, and if we go over to this tab here, uh, so Palmerston North, we just have other and articles, but I will do a more open search to show you all the different content types. So 
so in this drop down here. Um, newspapers, articles, archives, books, a huge range. You can see the huge range of different types of material. So um, one thing that's worth mentioning, uh, so on Digital New Zealand, you can search uh, for papers past for, for our digitized newspapers. Um, but I would mention that I, I believe, talking to colleagues, it's about 60% of papers past is available on Digital New Zealand. So it's not the full corpus of the digital, of the papers past um, material. I'm hoping you can all still hear me. I'm kind of just talking on. You can still hear you. <laughs> you can still hear me, okay. Yeah, okay. I just like lost contact with you slightly there. Yeah, no, cool. you're good. Awesome. Um, yeah, so I would, I mean, I guess I generally say searching for papers past material, it's great on Digital New Zealand, you can place some of it in relationship to um, obviously other digital collections, but I probably would say searching papers past is probably better just to do on the papers past website on the whole. Um, yeah, so that gives you a sense of the range of material that's available. And I thought I would just very briefly show you, just because it might be of um, sort of professional interest to you, um, the... I'm uh, just searching for my slide. Um, how it looks in the back end. So uh, Ting, our co my colleagues Ting and Tonya um, work as our harvesters, our content analyst and our data analyst respectively. Um, and they are the people who are working with um, collaborators across the country um, harvesting the metadata relating to their collections and um, bringing it into the Digital New Zealand um, corpus. And I thought I'd just give you a sense of, this is um, the software that they use, it's called Supplejack. Um, and it's a bespoke software that Digital New Zealand has actually developed over the years of its existence. Um, and we have actually open sourced the software Supplejack. Uh, so it's available to the, yeah, the open source community to use. Um, and basically what it does, the core of Supplejack is to bring together collections with disparate and different metadata and bring those together into one into one uh, kind of corpus and make that and then that is made available. So it's bring, weaving together different collections is the key of Supplejack's um, work. And there are a number of organizations around the world who are interested in using the software, including um, Nautanga Sound and Vision, use Supplejack to bring for their online search um, of their different collections as well. So this kind of gives you a sense of what Ting and Tonya kind of look at every day and how Digital New Zealand works. So. Um, you can see actually Tonya's working with Julia at the moment on um, harvesting the Lianza, um, the Lianza Recollect site um, and there are a few other content partners that we are working with and uh, depending on the relationship um, and the agreement with content partners, the harvest, the, the harvest of the metadata will run sometimes every day, sometimes every week, um, but relatively frequently and um, this kind of means that on Digital New Zealand, it's a very dynamic sort of entity. So as organisations are adding extra content or deleting material um, that is reflected very uh, rapidly on Digital New Zealand. So the kind of search results that you're getting back from, digi from Digital New Zealand will change um, quite dynamically and quite regularly. Um, I should also say at this stage that we really invite um, ideas uh, people to contact us if they if you have a collection that you're interested in working with us on and making available via Digital New Zealand or if you know of one um, we're really keen to get your feedback and your thoughts and um, your ideas for uh, collections that you think would benefit from being available via the Digital New Zealand search so um, I really encourage you to do that. And I won't go into too much detail here, but I thought you also might be interested to see a little bit of how a script works on Digital New Zealand. So this is a script for Toitu Otago Settlers Museum. And you can see a little bit here of how the mapping works. So we will take um, a field from the metadata. So this, I think this is a Vernon, um, a Vernon system. We will take um, a field from Toitu's um, metadata and we'll map that to one of the agreed uh, fields on our metadata schema. So you can see that kind of happening around the centre of this page in, in relation to the display collection, um, the display date, the landing URL where that we will link out to and all that kind of thing. So um, yeah, this is how this is kind of a script 
that's used for Toy 2 and gives you a sense of all the mapping that goes on behind the scenes and you can appreciate the complexity of the system as well when we're working with um, over 200 different organizations to uh, yeah to make sure that this is all running and mapped in the correct way and um, yeah it's one of the great things about our work that we really enjoy doing so I'm just going to go back to digital NZ and for those who sort of joined up a little halfway through, I just sort of thought for simplicity, um, just save up any questions you have until the end and we can ask them and we can ask them um, towards the end just to kind of simplicity of unmuting and muting microphones. So please do save questions if you have them as I'm going through. Um, so I'm just going to talk very briefly about now Digital New Zealand's API, but I also encourage you, we're running another webinar particularly in relation to this, so I'll just talk for a couple of minutes about it to give you a sense of this other side of Digital New Zealand's work, one of which is the search side and one of which is the data side. So as I mentioned before, all this metadata that we're bringing together into one, uh, into one API is actually made available for free for people to use. And these are some examples if you want to check them out on our um, the developers page of our website. Um, this has um, examples and exemplars of people who use this data to power their search services. So um, in the National Library, we're actually kind of one, the biggest consumer, we ourselves are the biggest consumer of our API in a way, and that the National Library website is run on the Digital New Zealand API. Um, the Network for Learning uses it for their portal. Um, Seismic, the Canterbury Earthquake Digital Archive, um, uses Digital New Zealand as the data that powers their um, search site. Um, World War I Centenary, uh, Europeana, any questions? Um, the Lifelines table. So yeah, feel free to check out this page to get a sense of the sort of things that people are building with the data. And also maybe if it was a little bit unclear how it all works, this will kind of give you or some really concrete demonstrations of um, the data being employed with kind of different skins put on it in different ways um, of being displayed and arranged. So yeah, I encourage you to check that out. And there's also some examples down the bottom here about um, people who have kind of a little widget, so like a little extra search results popping up on their, um, on their search page. They take a little slice of the Digital New Zealand API to populate parts of their site with extra search results that their um, people, their users and search researchers might be interested in. So it's a little list of those here. So that's on, I encourage you to have a look. It's on the developers page of our, web night, uh, our website and API examples um, in use. But yeah, I encourage you, give me some details at the end about our next webinar, but we're gonna dig a little bit more into the API work for those who are interested. Um, so at this stage, I, some of you may be thinking the question that you may be storing up for the end that I often get in presentations um, is why wouldn't I just use Google to find this stuff? And um, what, how does Digital New Zealand work in relation to other search services? Um, so Google is obviously the first port of call for the vast majority of us for finding material. And Digital New Zealand definitely works um, in tandem with Google. So we, uh, we, have um, obviously this kind of any material that's available online is also searchable about Google, but Google can sometimes be a bit opaque about its algorithm and how it finds stuff. And often material, some really interesting content um, can be buried down on the 27th of page of Google or pages really far down the search that people are unlikely to get to. So Digital New Zealand kind of works in tandem with that in that we want to make sure that material that otherwise might be really far down in a Google search is, um, is bubbled up and also accessible by the Digital New Zealand search. Um, we also, I also kind of think of Digital New Zealand as a really useful tool for teaching kind of the digital literacies of finding trusted information and kind of assessing the veracity of the information that you were given, which is often sort of talked about um, sort of paradigmatically as a really important issue of our moment. Um, because we are uh, obviously working with trusted institutions and um, making their, con organizing their, helping to organize their material and make it accessible via the site. Um, they're all really trustworthy sources on Digital New Zealand. So I often, when I'm talking to teachers and students, I often really get this feedback from them that Digital New Zealand is a good place to start, um, often for first time researchers, because you're kind of in this, a slightly potted search. You're not out in sort of wild west of, of Google. And um, 
The other thing is in relation to items on Digital New Zealand, uh, the, that you're, the very quick and immediate link to um, the organisation that is the repository of the item. So for example, this image of Wellington Public, of Wellington Public Library, you can click out immediately to the item on this, on this organisation site. Um, and otherwise on Google, sometimes you get sort of swept up in a sort of, uh, not a vortex, but uh, images are quickly sort of disassociated from the repository or the organisation that is responsible for them. And on Digital New Zealand, we really want to make that relationship clear and also really evident to people how they can, how to cite um, material. Um, we, I'm going to talk a little bit about the filters now, and I guess it's a really good segue in that one of the really key um, focuses of Digital New Zealand's work has also been around making it clear to people what they can and can't do with digital material. So again, this is cited as an important digital literacy, is kind of learning about um, responsible reuse online and when you can and can't do things with material. And as a result, Digital New Zealand, we've sort of developed these usage terms. Um, so if you click on the usage drop-down filter, every item on Digital New Zealand will have um, an example of uh, uh, one of these terms or a combination of them. So we have all rights reserved, um, obviously in, in copyright, um, modify, so remixable, um, share, unknown and use commercially. So we want it to be very evident um, kind of what the material can be used for. Although we do obviously always have um, this information that you do need to check on your co the content partners website to fully ascertain that. Um, I would actually say, um, and we've got a webinar about this for the last of our tripartite of webinars. Um, these terms, modify and share, and all these terms were something that was developed early in digital New Zealand's life. And I think we, we're actually undergoing some work at the moment to refine these um, because they are a little bit unclear. So for example, what does share really mean? Does it mean you can copy this image and post it on your Instagram account without any issue? Or does it mean you can just share the URL of this item? Um, it's a little bit ambiguous because I guess sharing has become, it's always changing. It's kind of what that, what that verb means is, is changing quite regularly as modify is a little bit unclear. So we're working to refine these even more and we've got a session about this later in the year. We encourage people to join if they're interested. Um, working towards, again, this, I, this goal of just making it very evident to people uh, what they can and can't do um, with material. So that kind of was a good intro to one of our drop downs because I was going to show you just a few of the uh, um, search refinements that you can do on Digital New Zealand when you're looking for things. So the first port of call obviously is just refining your search term. And we do have all of the kind of traditional um, uh, search syntax that you can use. We have a fuzzy search using the tilde. Um, you can also do like a Boolean search as well with and, um, not or or. Um, you can also do, I think you can also do wildcard. So you can put in a question mark for, and it would be any, any t uh, term, can, uh, any letter can be in there. So if you're unsure about the spelling of something, you can use the question mark as well. Um, but outside of the search box, you can refine your search by content partner, um, selecting and deselecting content partners. You can also do a collection. So the relationship between those two is that sometimes um, an organization will be our content partner, but they will have multiple collections. Um, so for example, um, it's an example. So Archives New Zealand have a, they have a YouTube collection of videos, but they also have a Flickr site. Um, and those are kind of separate collections from each other. So um, that is how that filter works. And then obviously the usage filter that I showed you, um, we get a lot of feedback that people working in um, journalists uh, often use our use commercially filter because they're looking for material obviously that they can use um, online. And then the date filter. So um, you can refine your search uh, just by decade at this stage. And I would, um, I would also mention that uh, obviously the specificity of the search, how information is displayed is also dependent on the metadata that comes from our content partners. So 
Um, unfortunately, if, if something doesn't have um, a date on it and then you're using this drop down filter to filter by the 1970s, uh, if that item isn't indi clearly indicated, isn't indicated as such, it won't come up on that search. So there's a lot of kind of variables, I guess, just as a result of all the different organizations um, that we're working with and the different structures um, that they have used for their um, descriptive information. Um, so I've just got about just aware of time ticking along and the, um, wouldn't take some time for questions at, at the end. And I am also aware that many people are probably on their lunch breaks and maybe, maybe eating sandwiches as, or as you listen to me. Um, so I thought I'd just spend uh, the last little bit talking about stories. Um, so Digital New Zealand, uh, we've, uh, when was it, several years ago now, we developed a functionality on a site called Sex. So the idea was, um, Digital New Zealand has the potential just to grow continuously. So as more material is digitized and as we harvest it, it you know, the corpus of Digital New Zealand's material could just grow and grow and grow and grow. And so we wanted to make sure that we have ways for people to kind of make sense of that sea of information on the site um, and to make it meaningful for them um, and to be useful um, for research and, that, and those kind of activities. So sets were developed and then they became what is now known as stories and they're basically just it's just like a pinterest board essentially or another there's lots of different um it's like a gallery or a kind of bucket that you can put interesting items into um that you that are useful to you and your work so all you have to do is um sign up to digital new zealand with a login which is very easy and straightforward and i will just sign up with my sign in with my login and then um, as you are searching, you can click on items and add them to a story. And you're basically just putting them in a little bucket where you can go back and find them later. Um, you can do that from this page. So add to story. These are all my stories here, which are great, many of them. Create a new story. Let's create a story about the languages story and then yeah you can just go through and click add to story and add it to your story as you go it's very easy and straightforward um, you can also do it from the item page like so and then if you click on my stories up here in your little drop down all your stories will appear here's one we're just making about libraries and so here you can add a story title, you can add a description, you can add some subjects, and you can also um, change the accessibility of it. So if you want it to be public, um, that means if someone's searching on libraries on Digital New Zealand, your story will come up as a little search result. But if you want to keep it um, hidden, which means it's only viewable if you send someone the URL, or you can just keep it private, which is totally private and only viewable by you. So you can change the um, privacy features there and then you've got your items here you can move them around you can add some text to them and we've found um, we added this the text functionality is all it was pretty new on digital New Zealand um, before it was just sort of adding items and we've seen some really interesting cases of people using stories um, for school assignments and university essays um, adding quite a lot of text in, or people just add um, items uh, without adding any text. You can also annotate here. So a little annotation to the story here. Um, and also write um, yeah, so we've seen some really interesting uses of stories and we're really keen to promote this service to people who are potentially writing school assignments or um, doing other kinds of research as a tool to kind of not only keep your material together, but if you're interested, adding a kind of extra information about items that you've collected. Um, and I mentioned this in the blurb to this webinar as well, that stories, um, we kind of believe stories are a great sort of, again, a sort of great digital literacy tool in that people can almost like references you can put in um, digital items that kind of um, 
uh, uh, back up your argument. It's almost kind of like sort of citations in a way if you wanted to add in images or video um, that relate to your to the text that you're producing. It's a nice way of kind of keeping it all together on one easily manageable um, bundle. Um, I'll just quickly show you a few demo stories on our on our homepage. So we sort of pop as people are making stories, we pop them up some of them up on the homepage as they come through. Um, this was one from today. This was a student in Auckland made this one about Nati Power. So this is just an um, one with who has just added some items in. And I believe this one is a really fantastic one with a lot of added texts, um, equal pay in New Zealand. Yeah, so this one is about um, equal pay and pay equity. It's a really incredible story. This person has put together um, kind of also, I guess, in relation to the 125th anniversary of suffrage this year. So you can see they've put, written some material, put together cartoons from all well, these ones from the Turnbull Library relating to this issue. Um, stuff from Ministry of Culture and Heritage. Yeah, so it's a really great way of um, employing items from our uh, kind of glam collections um, and seeing again seeing them in relation to each other and how they inform each other. Um, this is a really rich story, really fascinating stuff. So yeah, that gives you a sense of um, some of the stories people make. They make them for school assignments, for um, genealogy, um, for uni essays, all sorts of stuff. And people also, there's a great cohort of people who just make stories for fun. And um, this is one I often bring up, it's one of my favorite stories. This is, it's really great actually, if you search in Digital New Zealand on a verb, often you'll come back with a lot of really fascinating um, and quite disparate images. And stories are a great way of kind of exploiting um, the serendipity, I guess, of searching on Digital New Zealand and finding stuff that relates to each other in unexpected ways. Um, this is a great one of people leaning. Studio portraiture on digital New Zealand is a great, fascinating trove of information, like these rugby players as well. Um, yeah, so please have a click around on the site and have an explore of all the stories that people have made. There's lots of really inventive and um, interesting and clever stories out there that people have created. Um, yeah, so I'm just aware of the time. I'm just going to wrap up um, just by saying uh, thanks very much, everyone, for joining. And I, it's really great for us to share this information with you um, as librarians across the country, particularly this year because uh, we are turning 10 years, 10 years old. So Digital New Zealand has been around for 10 years now. And um, yeah, I guess the, the landscape, I mean, you will know this more than us, is that the landscape of information access um, is changing all the time. People's expectation about what they can and can't find online and what they can and can't do with it is, is a constantly evolving thing. But at the core of Digital New Zealand's um, kaupapa is really making sure that the great um, wealth of New Zealand's digital material is really discoverable and shareable, regardless of how other search services um, may change or adapt um, the algorithms. Um, digital New Zealand is, a, is um, a, yeah, a robust kind of place where, people, where those materials will always be brought together and accessible um, and placed in context of other items from New Zealand's kind of culture and society more generally. Um, and yeah, we really hope that it will be a useful, the website digitalnz.org will be a useful resource for you um, in a lot of the work that librarians do and um, providing um, search services, research services and information access to all the people across Aotearoa. So um, thanks very much for joining me. I just quickly mentioned, uh, Julia mentioned at the beginning, but we are running um, a series of webinars about digital New Zealand this year. So this is, of which this is the first. Um, and I encourage you, if you're interested, about that little snippet that I gave you in relation to the API. Um, if you would like to join us for another one, we have another webinar on the 12th of September, and my colleagues um, Dan, Charles, and Ting Sun will um, be explaining a little bit more about how that data service works. Um, it'll be very um, simple and introductory, so don't feel like you need like a really deep deep um, knowledge of technical um, infrastructure stuff to, to make sense of it. Um, Tim will be providing an introductory um, webinar. So yeah, if you're really interested in that, please do join us for that. But, um, 
Otherwise, that is all I have to say. I remembered the name of the metadata schema halfway through my presentation, which was Dublin Core, which is obviously uh, quite a standard one. So the, the metadata schema that we map to is kind of an augmented Dublin Core schema for those who are wondering about that. Um, yeah, so Julia, what do you think? If people want to ask a question, they can just pop their microphone on and, yeah. and ask and if away. They, um, if their microphone isn't working, you can ask it through the chat because we've had one question uh, from someone who had to leave. Okay. And so, um, they've asked, in publicly viewable stories, can others add to, or is it only me who can add, and can someone add items from their personal collection into stories by loading it to Digital New Zealand? Cool. Um, so you should be able to see that in the chat. Yeah, cool, I'm just bringing that up. Cool. Yeah, so that's a really good question. So yeah, publicly viewable stories, um, Unfortunately, at present, this is, and this is something we're looking into, it is only you, if you have your login, you're the only person you can add to it. You could, of course, share your login with someone if you wanted to, someone else to add to it and work on it collaboratively. So, yeah, unfortunately, that's just, it's just your story at the moment. Um, and can someone add items from their personal collection and destroy as they load? Yes, yeah, so at present, we don't have the functionality for people to actually upload their own material to Digital New Zealand. But again, that is something that an idea that we're exploring at present. Yeah. Um, I see also someone has asked, is the text in stories searchable? Um, and yes, it is. Um, cool. So I think, ah. Uh, do you offer tools for one's personal digitization projects? Um, yeah, we do. So I'll just turn on my share again so you can see this. So when digital was first uh, digital, when digital New Zealand was first set up, um, one of the key offerings that we had was this Make It Digital service, which is a um, kind of set of guides for digitizing, um, creating digital content, describing it, managing it. So I just clicked on this link up the top of. Um, at the top of the site here and this brings a, like a really a great sort of series of guides about creating um, digital material and looking after it and enabling use and reuse so we encourage you to have a look at that if you are undertaking your own digitization project and need a little bit of guidance yeah does anybody else have any questions uh, can we share publicly viewable story URL on a website. Yeah, absolutely. Yep, you can totally do that. Um, yeah, every story will have, so again, sorry, I probably should just leave my share on, I'll just show you. Um, every story has a persistent URL, um, which it is given at the moment of its creation, and you're very welcome, obviously, to use that um, for any purpose. And we actually have, so it's just up here, you can grab that. Um, the other thing is, uh, these we have also have Twitter cards. So if you're share and face and also on Facebook as well. So if you're sharing a story um, on Facebook or social media, it will bring up. It's quite a nice. It's displayed quite nicely in that it brings up the first um, hero image at the top of the story. So it kind of looks quite nice in social media. So you can obviously share your stories um, via those um, methods too. Cool. Um, does anybody else have a question? It's another one. No. Um, how do you see how you can engage community to expand digital New Zealand collections, metadata, or others? Is that in the search box or is another one? Um, I'll just... Uh, I'm not sure I'll ask, hang on. So what was it, Julia? How can you engage community to expand? Digital New Zealand's collections or metadata or yeah. areas? Yeah, so that's, that's an interesting question. I think um, that's kind of my role really at Digital New Zealand is to make sure we are working really widely with a wide group of um, content partners and also different audiences as well. Um, and I'm always welcome, I'm always welcoming ideas on how to do this better and get information about Digital New Zealand out there more. Um, our main goals for this year are yeah, to deliver a range of presentations to um, a wide different 
a wide variety of groups of audiences. Um, but we also have a really strong strategic goal to increase the amount of te reo material and Pacifica material available on the site so that Digital New Zealand really reflects and serves the di diversity of um, Aotearoa in 2018. Um, so we're really working uh, with um, various groups to, uh, to achieve that goal. Um, and other things we do, we obviously just have our social media outreach um, and we have a newsletter that goes out to all of our content partners. Um, yeah, but it is a, I think it is a challenge for us actually. And I think that's a really good question is that um, to raise Digital New Zealand's profile and make sure people know that it's a great place to go to. We get a lot of feedback from first time users of Digital New Zealand that they're like, oh, it's great because I uncovered all these collections that I didn't know about and I wouldn't have been able to find out about otherwise. So we are aware that have feedback that the site's really useful, but we're always challenged to make sure lots of people know about it. Yes, yeah, sir. Do you see there's two more questions for you? Yeah. That? <laughs> that one can't do. Oh, sorry. I, I didn't. I realised as I was saying that, that I didn't explain that very well. We can, we do. We can. So the question is: Do I understand you correctly that one can't do and or search, for example, port? Robinson or Cheviot Bay or Gore Bay. Um, so multiple ors, I think multiple uh, yeah, conjunctions there. Um, I believe you can do that, but I would encourage you to go to help and then how to search on Digital New Zealand, which has a list of um, all of the different uh, search types that you can do. Um, and I believe you can do multiple ors. Um, yeah, I think you can. you can give it a go and see anywhere. I don't know if it talks about it on here. Multiple ores. Oh no, sorry, you're correct. Yeah, so I'm just learning on the fly as I read this. Use or to get results that include at least one of your search terms. Oh, so that's a singular or. Um, I'm not quite sure about multiple ores. I might have to get back to you on that one. Sorry, Rebecca. <laughs> I'll ask the team and I'll get Julia's details from you. Cool. Um, there's another nice question about citing content. Uh, yeah, uh, we're and yeah. yeah, so again, Rebecca, that's a really good question and it's something that we're also working on as well. So we don't have, so a few of our equivalent, um, so like Trove and Europeana and the Digital Public Library of America are kind of equivalent services overseas, so aggregators again. And a bunch of them have um, this really, yeah, and actually the New York Public Library has this, this really well example of this as well, where it just says, um, if you want to use this item, here's how to cite it. And it just has a great little blurb that you can copy and paste. Um, we don't currently have that as a, one of our fields, as you can see here on the metadata on the side. Um, we just have the rights information, the collection that it comes from and subjects. But I think um, that's a great question because I feel like that would be something maybe great that Digital New Zealand could create using um, weaving together different fields that are agreed on by the content partner to provide like a really easily copy and pasted citation. Um, so again, this is coming back to the idea of just making it really clear what people can do with digital content and then how they can obviously um, cite appropriately. So thank you for that question. It's something we haven't developed as yet, but it's um, been something we've been talking about for a while. Um, someone's also asked, what special features does Digital New Zealand have compared to other digital libraries? Um, yeah, by digital libraries, um, so do you, does, do you mean, um, Ravinda, do you mean like public libraries or, um, I guess, I guess the thing, some, I guess some specific things to, uh, like European, oh uh, yeah. Um, so we're quite equivalent to those. We're sort of different in some ways um, and equivalent uh, and the same in others. So um, in relation to Europeana, uh, they obviously have a much, I don't know if it's bigger, but they uh, have a, uh, yeah, a large, a greater number of content partners, obviously just given the number of um, people in Europe. But um, we do have, I believe we do have a much more frequent harvesting than Europeana. So I'd have to check with um, my team, but my sense is that the harvest in Europeana run 
you know, maybe like not as frequently as Digital New Zealand. So the, with Digital New Zealand, as I mentioned, the search is very dynamic in the sense that we bring, we harvest very regularly. So um, the search is always changing. And I believe that's quite specific to Digital New Zealand. The other thing I think that distinguishes us from them is that we have quite a wide remit in, in the sense of the type of metadata that we are able to harvest. We're quite, um, we've got a quite a broad, uh, um, Subproject is quite broad in what it can bring together. We don't have, I think some of the other digital libraries have quite specific requirements in what they have for their content partners as to what they can bring, they can bring into their um, systems. But Digital New Zealand is much more, our system is much more flexible. So we have, um, as such, we have a, a kind of a greater breadth, I think, of content in the sense um, that is described very differently from each other, but we can sort of still deal with it and make it accessible via the site. Um, I think the other sites have this sort of story function. Digital, the Digital Public Library of America just launched this thing called Lists, which is sort of a similar thing. Um, but I think Stories is quite specific to Digital New Zealand, this ability to add text. Um, yeah, but otherwise, I think we're quite equivalent. I mean, I think there are differences in the sense that Trove in Australia um, is kind of, was born out of their digitized newspapers and then kind of expanded to its the wider aggregation. Um, whereas in New Zealand, we have, you know, Papers Pass does a great job of that. And Digital New Zealand is quite a separate entity. So um, they're, yeah, they're, we're quite different in that sense. Most people in Australia will use Trove to search the digitised newspapers where in New Zealand you can search some of those on, on digital New Zealand, but you would more likely just to use papers past. Yeah, hopefully that answers your question, Ravinda. And I see Barbara Walsh has asked, how often is often in terms of harvesting? Yeah, so that kind of varies. Um, uh, so I'll just bring up my little PowerPoint before. You guys can still see me, eh, Julia, the, my screen share? Yeah, I can still see your screen. Yeah, cool. Um, so this is the, the a screenshot of the Supplejack dashboard. Um, and so you can see down the very bottom there, the next and the next scheduled jobs. So there's a whole bunch of ones that were coming up um, today. So they're kind of like running a daily harvest. And then there's another one so kind of complicated but we'd have our own blog which is i won't go into the detail of that but some of them are run monthly um but yeah some of them run daily and um i i have to check with my colleagues i'm pretty sure this is correct so if you see on the right hand side where it says mode full and flush that means it's everything goes out and then everything new comes back in from Auckland museums youtube and then I think a normal one is just updates so if things have been changed then we'll update that instead of all going out and all coming back in um, which is not a very technical way of describing it, but I guess you get what I mean. <laughs> Makes sense to me. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so it, it, it varies depending on the content partner, Barbara, um, but um, yeah, every day sometimes. Um, I've got another question in relation to Trove. Someone said it looks like they're using um, community participation a lot to make sense of their collections. Yeah. Are any similar things? For digital New Zealand? Yeah, another really great question and something that we would love to get into um, more. Um, so Trove obviously have really awesome text correction, um, like the OCR correction on their, on their newspapers. Um, this is something that we would really like to get more involved in. Um, I also think, I think stories are kind of like a, a step in this direction in the sense that obviously people can add their text and also annotate items, but they're not obviously changing the metadata from the institution in relation to the item. So if you annotate something in a story, it will come up, you know, on that story, but when you search for the item on Digital New Zealand, your annotation is not tied to it, if that makes sense. For example, this item here, you get that little extra bit in the story, but then on the actual item page, you're just getting the institutional metadata. Um, but I feel like the stories are kind of we're sort of stepping in this direction of contributed content from our community. Um, this kind of interesting relationship between institutional work and then the work of our users um, and people out there is really fascinating. Um, yeah, so unfortunately, we our, the functionality we have for that is relatively limited slash non-existent <laughs> at present, but it is something that we're often thinking about and hoping to develop more in this area. Um, yeah, yeah, so that's a slightly equivocal answer, but yeah, thank you. 
And then did you see the other question from Barbara about how long till yeah. patients last as fully accessible for long digital New Zealand? Yeah, um, that's another really good question. Um, my, the short answer is I don't really know, but it is something that we are working on. Um, yeah, it's uh, one of the great things about searching on Papers Pass, actually this is an example of it on this page, you get this really great separation on Papers Pass of the images and text. So it's kind of a very different way of searching that information um, than the Papers Pass website. Um, and we are looking into it. It is kind of a question of, um, what's the word? Uh, it's a lot of uh, weight on the digital New Zealand system because Papers Pass is such a massive collection. Um, and it's you know by far the majority of the work of the content on digital New Zealand is Papers Pass, even though we're only pointing to a small, uh, to about 60% of it. Um, so it's just about making sure our systems are robust enough to deal with that, deal with the quantity of that content and still maintain um, like a good search, a good search experience. So we're working on it, yeah. Cool. Don't think there are any more questions at the moment. Good questions. Thanks everyone. That's really, that was great. Good questions to talk about. Yeah, he runs onto it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I hope Digital New Zealand is, um, is useful for everyone out in the library world and um, for librarians and also people coming to libraries and um, we really welcome feedback and, and thoughts about the service and things that we can change and make better. Um, obviously on all, the, on all the social media platforms and um, you can contact us via just this email address which goes to everybody on the team. So yeah, if you have any thoughts or ideas, um, please get in contact because we love to hear from people. And they're really awesome to work with because they sit right opposite us um, at National Library. <laughs> <laughs> we do. We just sit over the whiteboard from Julia and her team. Yeah. So it's cool. Yeah. They're awesome. <laughs>